take professional photos, some basic knowledge you can do while on your way. Hello, my name is Ariella Karisk. I'm in 8th grade and from Forsyth Gap. Today I'd like to share with you the important key settings that can turn good photos into great photos, and some photos I've taken from my photography business. Before I tell you about some of my photos, I want to give you a good understanding of what makes up a photo. Cameras have many settings, and all of them play an important role in what in your composition of your photograph. So what is aperture? Aperture is like our eyes. Pupils expand and contract as the light comes and goes to protect the rest of our eyes from the right, bright light. The aperture is very similar. It expands and contracts at the, and when the shutter button is pressed to allow the right amount of light in. This protects the photograph from being too light or too dark. The next setting is shutter speed. Shutter speed is how long the shutter stays open. If you set your shutter speed for super slow, such as 1 25th of a second, you can capture a moment like this. Picture. Let's wait. Prolonged shutter speeds will blur any motion in the picture, such as these lights. To capture quick action shots, like animals moving, raindrops falling, children moving, many more, you would need an ISO, er, a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second or faster. Equally as important as shutter speed is focal length. Focal length is the amount of distance your camera will read the details of your subject. When you use your camera zoom, you are increasing your focal length. For instance, a picture taken of a barn across a field, a 15 millimeter focal length will portray the barn as far away and small. However, a 300 millimeter focal length will put in half the barn as if you are standing right in front of it. This allows you to get great shots of objects far away and also beautiful landscapes. Now let's discuss f-stops. F-stops create margins for your aperture. By adjusting your f-stops, you're able to decide how much of your photo can focus. F1 will just focus on close objects. F22 will focus everything that camera sees. F-stops give your photos depth and light. The last setting I would like to talk to you about is ISO. ISO is how sensitive the film is. The higher the ISO, the more light sensitive your images will be. For low light photos, you would need an ISO speed of 400 or higher. However, in broad daylight, you are going to want to use 100 ISO speed. All, all of these settings combined, if done properly, will result in a beautiful photograph with high definition and great depth. Enough about the settings. Let me tell you about myself and my own experiences taking photographs. I, ha I have, ever since I can remember, loved photography and taking photos. I actually got serious about photography when I was 11, and my grandfather gave me his camera to take pictures during our vacation. I then started to learn about the camera settings, and I used my mother's camera to take all kinds of pictures. One of the many important things that I have learned is, you don't take a photograph, you create it. When I was 12, my grandmother gave me a Nikon D200. I started to take pictures of everything I could. My mother even joked that it was rare to see me without a camera to my face. When I was 13, I used the money that I had saved over the years to buy this camera, a Canon EOS Rebel T3, and a package deal with sever several other lenses and accessories. Some of the other items included a 75 to 300 millimeter lens, a wide angle attachment, tripod, and an external flash. This investment in camera equipment has allowed me to start an online business selling my photographs. I have been very busy over the last few months with the Etsy store that I have built. My store name is Ella's Enchanted Photos. I use social media, business cards, and of course, word of mouth to promote my business. At the moment, I have over 160 listings for sale and over 1,000 followers. I am very excited to share with you some of my favorite photos and a bit about them to help you understand how the settings help the composition of your photographs. All these, all these photos were taken with this Canon EOS T3 DSLR camera. Here is a picture of a photo that is overexposed. I used an aperture setting of 6. A better setting would have been 2. I had been taking pictures of flowers at the time when I saw this cloud. It is always important to check, te check your settings when changing the composition of your photographs, or else you might turn out with that. With using Picasa editing software, I was able to edit this photo into something beautiful. I lowered the brightness in the editor, and this photo was the result. I have named this photo Halo in the Sky. Ally is my bestseller. This, um, this photograph was taken at the top of Amaclova Falls. 
He'd eaten a mouse that ingested rat poison. He got so sick that he almost died. The rangers were able to rehabilitate him, and now he lives out his days in comfort, helping teach children and adults the importance of caring for the environment. It took a rubber mouse, but we finally got him to face the right way for the perfect shot. I used an f-stop of 5.6 in order to have the owl in focus, but also to blur the background, as there was a stone fireplace and even a banner in the background. Once I got home, I cropped the photo. I used Picasa editing software to create a focal black and white. This gave the effect of a colored eye, while the rest was black and white. This wonderful photograph is called Mossy Tree. I took this picture while in Florida. The sun was setting over the golf course, and this beautiful tree was calling me to capture its beauty for eternity. The moss is like Spanish moss. It's like cousin. It's everywhere. This photograph was taken with a focal length of 75 millimeters in order to capture the beautiful landscape and create depth. Antique car. This, this photo was taken, uh, captured at the Atlanta History Center just outside the Swan House. This carefully composed photograph was edited to black and white to match the time period of the car. Along with the Swan House in the background, it proves for an old-timey look of the photograph. If the background consisted of more modern images, the, the photo would not have the same feel. I learned that the photograph and the background of the photograph is just as important as the main subject. This photograph I have named Sleeping Flamingo. A chilly day at the zoo turned out to be a perfect day to take, to take pictures of flamingos trying to stay warm and take a nap. I stood on the stairs and captured this picture-perfect scene. For this photograph, I used an ISO of 320 since it was not a bright day due to cloud cover. This allowed for a crisp photo and a bright subject. This is my brother, Seth. He's too, and an extremely busy boy. I used a show speed of one four hundredth of a second to forever hold in frame his little pe game of peekaboo. We were playing in the park after two different families' portraits. I was taking candid photos of my siblings and their children from the other families. This photo was one of my favorites from that day. Up in the trees was, ta was taken while on a photography and a hiking expedition with friends from 4-H and our families. This trip was planned so I could show them how to use a camera and to learn how to make lasting memories using photography. For this photo, I placed the camera against the bark of this Virginia pine tree. Shooting almost vertically, I was able to capture the textured bark of the tree along with the branches and pine needles at the top. This picture is a perfect example of how all the camera settings work together. An ISO speed of 100 due to the sunny day an f-stop of four in order to create the textured look of the bark and also to be able to capture the trees around. A shutter speed of one two hundred and fiftieth of a second since the wind was blowing. I wanted a clear picture, not blurred lines. The focal length is set at 18 millimeters in order to have a clear shot of the tree itself and be able to capture a large amount of the background. For the aperture, I used a setting of four. This was to ensure a bright photo since I was shooting a dark subject. In conclusion, learning the proper settings and practicing them in a real life situation can have a dramatic effect on your photographs and how you take them. If you are looking to increase the quality of your photographs, I encourage you to play with your f-stops, your shutter speed, ISO, and focal length in your aperture. The more familiar you are with these settings, the more professional your photos will be. I hope you have enjoyed some of my favorite photographs. I look forward to seeing some of your photography creations. Thank you for your time.